A man drives his car and crashes into the gates of Zhongnanhai, shouting loudly, "Communist Party, the murderers!" As the two sessions of the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) concludes, a video circulating on the internet has shocked both domestic and international audiences. A black car rammed into the main entrance of Zhongnanhai, the government compound in Beijing. A man's voice could be heard shouting, "Communist Party, the murderers!" As the camera zooms in, a group of security personnel and armed police are seen carrying the driver away. The incident took place just one kilometer away from Xi Jinping's office. The 30-second-long footage went viral online. Former Chinese media personnel Zhao Lanjian shared the live video on X platform, stating, "In the early hours of March 10, 2024." As the representatives of the two sessions slept, Beijing was under tight scrutiny. A lone warrior drove his car, accelerating towards Xinhua Men. However, faced with formidable barriers, he encountered numerous security personnel who promptly apprehended him. Zhou Nanhai houses important governmental offices such as the State Council, the Secretariat of the CCP Central Committee, and the General Office of the CCP Central Committee. From the map, Xinhua Men is merely a kilometer away from Xi Jinping's office and residence at Yingtai. This brave soul's fate remains uncertain, reminiscent of the Tank Man of 1989. He became a shining symbol for the two sessions of 2024. Currently, the details of the incident and the whereabouts of the driver are under investigation. According to a Beijing-based journalist, the incident occurred at the main gate of Zhongnanhai Xinhua Men, near an artificial lake with pathways built around it. The car involved is of medium to high-end range, indicating that the owner is certainly not an ordinary individual. The exact The exact time of the incident cannot be confirmed. Many netizens have hailed him as the lone brave, the true hero. Some commentaries suggest, at such a sensitive time and place, if it's not due to deep grievances or desperation, one wouldn't risk crashing into the gates of Zhongnanhai. Veteran current affairs commentator Tang Jingyuan remarked, "He actually shouted, 'Communist Party, the murderers!'" This indicates that he might not be an ordinary petitioner, but rather directly expressing his anger towards the CCP. Mainland China has become a pressure cooker with no way out, which prompts individuals to take desperate actions like this. Dr. Wang Juntao, chairman of the National Committee of the Democracy Party of China, stated, "He primarily conveys three messages. Firstly, people hope this incident is unfavorable for Xi Jinping, hence unfavorable for the Communist Party. It indicates the will of the people and their hope for the downfall of the CCP." The second message is that such an incident near Zhongnanhai is a severe blow to the incumbent party leader. The third is that this incident might serve as a leading example for the populace. Dr. Wang further stated, "With more discussions, more and more people will emulate him because if they indeed do this, they will gain the support of the people and achieve eternal fame." As of now, all official channels have been blocked, and the whereabouts of the driver remain unknown. Wang Junhao commented, "He will surely face torture." We can imagine that, but I believe he was mentally prepared for this consequence. A netizen called Quantum Leap posted the following on social media X: On March 10th, during the two sessions, someone drove a vehicle and rammed into the Xinhua Men of Zhongnanhai, marking the first such incident in over 70 years of the CCP's rule. This shocking event signifies a significant change occurring after 2024. The people are directly targeting the CCP in their resistance, their anger burning directly towards the authorities, and the people are no longer fearful. It will have a tremendous impact and rallying effect on Chinese society. This event marks a great watershed. No one can predict the intense chain reactions and immense force this incident will generate. The vast populace has finally seen the direction of hope and a bright future. Previously, videos of vehicles entering Zhongnanhai have been shared by netizens, providing a glimpse into one of China's most mysterious architectural complexes. Zhongnanhai is now the seat of the highest CCP authority, covering an area of nearly 250 acres, and is the oldest, largest, most well-preserved, and picturesque royal garden in the world to date. The walls surrounding Zhongnanhai are all vermilion red, with yellow glazed tiles exuding majesty and splendor. This year's two sessions meetings, which lasted from March 4th to March 11th, were the shortest session in normal times, except for the three years under lockdown. From 2000 to 2022, the closing ceremonies lasted only about half an hour each. Throughout the conference, Beijing resembled a heavily guarded prison without walls, with stringent security measures in place, even on Front Gate Street. 
Even each delegate had to undergo security checks before entering the venue. According to a report by Nikkei Asia, although Beijing appeared calm during the two sessions, Chinese security agencies evidently weren't taking any risks. It's reported that around 800,000 police officers, armed police, and civilian volunteers were mobilized to maintain order during the two sessions. On March 9th, Zhao Lanjian, a journalist who fled to the United States, shared a live report from Beijing by another Chinese journalist. Police officers were densely deployed around Tiananmen Square along Chang'an Avenue and around the Great Hall of the People. Armed police and military personnel were on high alert, with police cars and armored vehicles everywhere. For the two sessions of 2024, the number of police reached maximum capacity. One National People's Congress delegate was accompanied by a hundred security and service personnel. All pedestrian overpasses on the second ring road and third ring road were closed off, turning pedestrian overpasses into dead ends. Pedestrians were prohibited from crossing out of fear that someone might suddenly run up to the overpass and cause trouble, such as throwing things, unfurling banners, shouting slogans, or releasing smoke bombs. Authorities wanted to shield diplomats and delegates from witnessing protests. Bus stops on the Second Ring Road and Third Ring Road in Beijing were equipped with retractable barriers, preventing passengers from getting on and off at will. Mysterious men in black hats along the street controlled boarding and alighting from buses at subway stations. These stations are usually closed to prevent protests on the main road. On the main and side roads, there were police cars every few hundred meters, with several plainclothes police officers every tens of meters. At major intersections were armed police and soldiers conducting random checks of pedestrians' documents and smartphones. Finally, Chinese media concluded, all these phenomena are to ensure that there is no chance of any delegate to interact with any people, and no one touches anyone else. The millions of people are your masses, and the thousands of people's representatives hold their meetings behind closed doors. Everyone minds their own business. There's no communication, no intersection. During this year's CCP2 sessions, accidents occurred frequently, which is also quite rare in CCP history. On the afternoon of March 6, the second session of the 14th National People's Congress held a press conference at the media center of the Diao Yutai State Guest House. Zhang Jiajie, director of the National Development and Reform Commission of the CCP, Minister of Finance Lan Fo An, Minister of Commerce Wang Wen Tao, Governor of the People's Bank of China Pan Gongsheng, and Chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission Wu Qing answered questions from journalists at the podium. Economics was a theme of this press conference. A short video of a female journalist rushing toward the podium during this press conference spread on overseas social media platforms. The footage showed a woman in gray suddenly rushing toward the podium in the front row, but she was quickly intercepted, and the television screen was immediately cut off. Taiwanese media SETN provided a longer video. As the press conference was about to end, the MC stated, Today's press conference ends here. Thank you, guests. Thank you, everyone. But before finishing the sentence, a woman wearing a gray jacket rushed towards the high-ranking CCP financial officials on the podium, only to be immediately tackled to the ground by several security personnel on both sides. According to the Taiwan media report, although the identity of the woman in the gray jacket cannot be confirmed, it can be seen that this woman raised her hand more than once, attempting to ask questions. Independent commentator Tsai Shen Kun posted on social media, revealing, the woman rushing to the podium is Li Xingping, a journalist from the People's Daily. It is rumored that she is the lover of Zheng Jiajie, the current director of the State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission, secretary of the party group and the National Development and Reform Commission and director. Zheng Jiajie was originally a technician at a factory in Xiamen. Since meeting Chinese politician He Lifeng, his fate has completely turned around. He has risen to become the governor of Zhejiang province, secretary of the Anhui Provincial Party Committee, and he now holds multiple positions, becoming a close confidant of State Council Vice Premier He Lifeng, who is Xi Jinping's most trusted economic aide. It remains to be seen how such a big scandal will affect Zheng Jiajie's political career. Another netizen posted that Zheng Jiajie dumped Li Xingping after his promotion. He speculates that the woman is unwilling to accept it and is seeking revenge. Many netizens commented, The mistress declares the end of Zheng Jiajie's political career. Just after the conclusion of the National People's Congress, a serious explosion occurred. 
On March 13th, at 7.54 a.m., a major explosion of unknown cause occurred in the Yanjiao area of Beijing. After a fried chicken restaurant made a deafening noise, the entire building collapsed. From the video footage, it can be seen that the explosion was powerful, with a wide impact area. Glass was shattered in nearby buildings, and several cars on the road were severely damaged. At least one building became rubble, and casualties were severe. Officially, as of noon on the 13th, the accident has resulted in two deaths and 26 injuries. According to Chinese media reports, another explosion occurred around 9 a.m. in the same area. Metro Line 22 was being built nearby. Taida Gas issued a notice to stop gas supply. I was only 100 meters away. When the explosion happened, I was inside at the Mingjun Donkey Meat Pancake Shop. I heard a loud bang, and when I came out, the four-story guest house was gone. My shop has been burned down. Several state media reporters conducted online interviews at the scene of the incident, but were forcefully interrupted by local police and government personnel. When a CCP reporter named Hai Ling was broadcasting live at the explosion site, local police and government officials suddenly appeared to block the camera and prevent reporting, claiming, it's the same for everyone. The anchor in the studio was astonished at the situation. The video was uploaded online. Another CCTV reporter, Xu Mengzhe, released a video of himself and two other reporters being pushed and blocked by more than a dozen police officers while covering the explosion site. While continuing to record the video, she said, We three reporters were surrounded by more than a dozen people. At present, Xu Mengzhe's online account has been cancelled. Chinese-speaking netizens outside China said, Even CCTV reporters have been suppressed. How many more news stories are suppressed in this country? In addition, during the two sessions, two government official buildings in Jiangsu province were bombed and set on fire, and some issued a decree to punish corrupt officials. On March 7th, an explosion at the Jiangjiagang Municipal Government Building in Jiangsu province caused a sensation. The entrance gate of the building was severely damaged. Multiple on-site images showed white smoke emanating from the lobby of the Jiangjiagang government building. The glass and door frames in the lobby were severely damaged, and there was a deformed liquefied petroleum gas cylinder outside the lobby. After the incident, a single document attributed to Yuan Jian Hong circulated online, stating, I bombed the Jiangjiagang municipal government building. I demand punishment for corrupt officials and the return of my factory, private residence, and other unjust treatments. I am waiting to surrender. Public information from 2014 indicates that Yuan Jianhong, who claimed responsibility for the explosion at the Zhangjiagang Municipal Government Building, is the legal representative of Zhangjiagang Hesheng CNC Machine Tool Manufacturing Company. The registered address of this company is in Nanfeng Town. According to Chinese Enterprise Search, the company was established in 2003 with a registered capital of 3 million RMB. As of February 2024, the legal representative of the company has been changed to Yuan Lin Fei. However, his anti-government manifesto has been completely blocked by the authorities. Meanwhile, on March 7th, a fire broke out at Jiangsu Provincial Public Security Department building located at number 1 Yangzhou Road, Nanjing City. Thick smoke billowed from top to bottom on one side of the building, burning all the way to the dome on the top floor. On the same day the two sessions ended, on March 11th, similar incidents occurred in at least four provinces, including Hebei, Hunan, Anhui, and Shanxi resulting in at least 14 deaths. The aforementioned series of events may express the dissatisfaction in many quarters, indicating that the CCP is facing a precarious situation. It's incredible that a car crashed into the Zhou Nanhai compound despite facial recognition and big data monitoring. How did the car manage to reach the gates of Zhou Nanhai? And who managed to capture and disseminate the video in an instant? These events have prompted comments like, the people have begun to resist, and the CCP's rule will soon come to an end. The crisis facing Zhou Nanhai is like a pressure cooker about to explode. Experts analyze that Xi Jinping is continuously consolidating power, and his political ambitions and lust for power are being strengthened. Despite Xi Jinping's apparent grip on power, he faces unprecedented risks and challenges. 
Lai Rongwei, executive director of the Taiwan Inspiration Association, told the Epic Times on March 12th that the shortened two sessions and the hasty closing ceremony correspond to extremely unstable trends in the CCP regime. Comparing it to CCP's party history, Lai Rongwei analyzed that after the CCP came to power in China, internal turmoil and political movements usually occurred when Mao Zedong believed that there were enemies within the party. He would then launch political movements. Xi Jinping will likely do the same in the future. He now holds absolute power, and factions will form along those underneath him. There are many factions within, and when Xi Jinping leads the country into difficult situations, these factions below him all fight internally. No one dares to criticize Xi Jinping, but each person under Xi Jinping's command fights under Xi's banner. Lai Rongwei said, why are foreign investors not daring to come to invest and the people are not daring to consume? The biggest reason is that the current situation in China gives people a feeling of very high political risk. Some analysts also point out that China's resistance has indeed reached a tipping point, although they are not organized and are still scattered and isolated, but both the reasons and goals are the same, which is to overthrow Xi's CCP regime. Xi Jinping's rule appears stable, but in reality, it's chaotic. Experienced observers can see and feel that this regime is in a state of collapse, and fleeing and resistance have become the two trends in Chinese society today.